Okay, in the previous lecture, I showed you how to populate with data the Key Stage 2 Progress and Attainment mark sheet. In this lecture, we'll have a look at that mark sheet and we'll try and analyze it using the various different functions that are built into any mark sheet, uh, but we'll use those specifically to analyze the data for our Key Stage 2 results. So just like in the previous lecture, I'm going to go to Focus, Assessment and Mark Sheet Entry. I'm going to find my Key Stage 2 um, mark sheets, which are here. As a default, I'll choose current year six. So these are my current year sixes. As I showed you in the other lecture, the trick is to convince the mark sheet to, to display last year's year sixes. And we do that by putting a date in the previous academic year. It doesn't matter what date you choose, so long as it's in the previous academic year. I'm choosing the 1st of June because that's roughly this, just after the exam season. And I'll click on refresh. So this list of pupils down the side now are last year's year sixes. And as I showed you in the previous lecture, we've calculated already all the key measures along here. Just to refresh your memory, I'm going to just concentrate on reading for this lecture. And here's all the, the various statistics for reading. Um, if I'm being picky, I might just press the calculate button again, just to make sure I've got all the very latest uh, data on here. And also to put these colors on, which help, help the eye and guide us to uh, uh, to interpret these results properly. Here you'll see the teacher assessment for reading in this case. Some special needs columns here for pupils who have special needs. Here's the estimated reading score based on the prior attainment group there. Here's the actual uh, scaled score that this pupil got in the test. And here is the progress indicator, the difference between this column and this column. Okay, that's what we've got. Let's see what we can do to analyze it. Um, the first thing I'll, I'll point you at is the ability we've got with any grade column to analyze the grades within that column. So, for example, here we've got some reading teacher assessments. If I right click on the column heading, I get this little sub menu appearing. And if I click on show grade distribution, I get this really very, very useful breakdown of all the grades in that column. And you can see that for our school, for this particular year six cohort, 91% of pupils were at the expected standard. And for the grades below that, that's the breakdown. Notice that nobody was at greater depth in this particular cohort. If I try the same thing here for writing, if I right click on the column, that's a right click, not a left click, a right click, and click on show grade distribution, I get a similar breakdown. For writing though, I do have some pupils at greater depth. I've got 15.52% of the pupils at greater depth. At expected, there are 75.86% of pupils at the expected standard. And that means that 91.38% of my pupils are either at the expected standard or higher. So basically that 91.38 is that figure plus that figure. Notice as well on here that I can swap between percentage of results and count of students. Going to students is often useful to actually put some numbers of pupils behind those percentages. Percentage of students is also available, but that's less useful because it still includes pupils for whom there is no result, and therefore all the averages tend to come down. So it tends to be one of these two, percentage of results or count of students. Once it's on count of students, the graph is actually quite useful here. It's one of the easier graphs to produce in Sims, uh, but it's very useful for popping into uh, PowerPoint presentations or Word documents. The only thing to watch is, for some reason, it's the highest grades first and the lowest grades last. The export button takes this small grid and pops it into an Excel spreadsheet and the print button does the same, but to the printer. So that's right clicking on a grade. Notice that it's not necessarily just grades that you can right click on and show a grade distribution. Some data, for example, the prior attainment group, although it looks like a number, is actually stored as a grade in Sims. So I can use the same technique to analyze the prior attainment group. For example, if I right click here now on the column heading, I still get the option to show the grade distribution because behind the scenes, Sims thinks this is a grade. And this gives me a breakdown of prior attainment groups. So from here, for example, I can say, well, 23.33 percentage of my pupils are in prior attainment group 15 and 51% are in prior attainment group 15 or higher. And again, I could put display that as a count of students and even graph it 
little breakdown of the prior attainment groups. I can see straight away I have 14 in prior attainment group 15. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is put some averages onto here. If I scroll up towards the top of the mark sheet, you'll see that there is a button there called Summary. If I click on Summary, you might not notice it straight away, especially if you have a smaller monitor. But down towards the bottom of the mark sheet, just using the scroll bars there, but down towards the bottom of the mark sheet, it adds this set of line, this set of rows. And these rows are giving me average figures. So bear in mind that we're looking at the whole of year six, the whole of last year's year six down here. Um, we can see, if we concentrate on our reading results here, we can see this column here is the actual scaled score that they got. And the average scaled score for the whole of year six was therefore 93.50. The mean, oh, sorry, the median, the one that most of our pupils got, was the 100 mark. But it's usually the mean which uh, is the most important figure. So the average is 93.5. That's for the whole of the group. If we look at the estimated score, the estimated score is 101.34. So that would suggest that if all our pupils had achieved um, national averages, they would have got, this group would have averaged 101.34. Um, obviously they've not, and the difference there is represented by this figure here, which is the average of all these reading progress figures down the side there. Obviously, you have to be slightly careful for one or two pupils whose um, um, progress is huge. They are outliers. Um, and it might be because those pupils are special needs, or it might be that they're international new arrivals or something like that. In a few minutes, I'll show you how we could filter out special needs and international new arrivals. But just do be aware that one or two pupils can make a huge impact on the averages that we see down there. But those are the averages across there. We can even see, if we look at the prior attainment group column, which is this one, that the average prior attainment group was 14.6. So that's the summary uh, roles. And like I say, you can turn those off and on by clicking on the summary button, which is there. Now, what we've done so far in terms of the um, grade distribution and the summary has been for the whole of year six because that's what we're displaying down this idea the whole of year six but usually we want to analyze subgroups within year six and that's why we've got the group filter just here and if we click on the group filter it may nag us and say do you want to say changes and as the default i usually say yes to that but it will then come up with this list which is a list of all the uh, vulnerable groups uh, that we could possibly have certainly that sims keeps track of these are all the the, the possible vulnerable groups that could exist within uh, our current year sixes let's have a, let's say i want to have a look at our potential differences between the progress of boys and the progress of girls i've got a gender filter here and if i put a tick there and click on apply this mark sheet now redisplays itself and it's just showing the boys. So all these averages are also the averages for the boys. So when I look at the actual scaled score average in this column here, and the scaled score is 88.62, I can compare that with the average for the girls by going back to the filter, taking the tick out of the boys and putting it into the girls there. Click on apply. And now the average for the girls is 103.25 so we can see quite a significantly better average for the girls than for the boys and that filter can provide us with a lot of the um, analysis that we need uh, just running through this list perhaps and pointing out some of the more useful analyses that we can provide with it for example if i want to uh, identify just the pupil premium pupils in this list I can click on the true filter there, and then that will give, give me a filter of just the pupil premium pupils. So this is a list of just those pupil premium pupils from the list there. And the average is underneath. So the average for the pupil premium pupils is 88. 
I can go back into here. I could have a look at Pupil Premium Boys because I could leave the blue tick there. Go to Boys and just have a look at Pupil Premium Boys. And there's the average now for Pupil Premium Boys. It drops again. Take those filters off. What about non-pupil premium pupils? Because quite often the question is, well, what's the average for pupil premium pupils? What's the average for non-pupil premium pupils? Well, we can do that by using this little exclude button down at the bottom here. If I put a tick in the exclude button, you see the green tick follows it. And that means now that when I go back into this list and start ticking options, it will exclude anybody for whom the pupil premium indicator is true in this case. So if I now click on apply, I now have a list of non-pupil premium pupils. I'll not go through all of these uh, filters um, because some of them are useful, some of them aren't, but I'll point out some of the some of the more commonly used ones. Obviously we've done pupil premium. Um, You've also got uh, access to term of birth. So maybe not in year six, but certainly for some of the analyses in year one and year two, it's quite useful to be able to pick out your summer born boys, for example. If I take the um, indicator out of there, there's summer born pupils. And if I go back to gender, that will give me a list of all the summer born boys in this class. You can also pick out um, pupils who've recently arrived in the cohort by using academic year of admission here. So if I click on that, this gives me all the possible years of admission. If I put a tick there, the most recent one, that will give me a list of all the pupils who arrived in this academic year. Now bearing in mind that this is last year's year six, that one's not going to be too useful, but this one will be. This will give me a list of all the pupils who arrived during that final year six for this cohort. And if I take this one, that will give me a list of all the pupils who'd arrived during year five. And if I click on apply now, I should get that list. I didn't have anybody in this particular case, but that would give me a list of all the pupils who'd arrived late into that particular cohort. I'll take those ticks out. And notice we've got one here for English as an additional language. This is a slightly different format where you can just tick directly yes and no. There's also um, options to pick up ethnicity, home language, special needs. Now special needs in this particular context is the actual need itself. Can be useful, but usually more useful is the um, SEN status indicator, which is here. And that gives you the um, SEN status that your school is using. Uh, so if I want to pick out everybody who's got an education, health and care plan, who's maybe got a statement of special support, special educational needs. I can put a tick in both of those, click on apply. And that gives me the list of pupils to whom that applies to. And again, if I was interested in all the non-SEN pupils in this particular year group, I could take the blue ticks out, click on exclude and put a red tick and click on apply. And this will give me a list of everybody apart from Martin on that particular list. So those are some tools that you have to provide some analysis. Could go on for a long time on analysis within a mark sheet, but hopefully that gives you a good overview of everything you can do in a mark sheet. It's very powerful. Um, once you've got it into a mark sheet, you can do a heck of a lot of uh, really useful analysis with this as a tool. Thank you.